All right. Well, welcome back here to the iWealth Podcast, where we talk about all things that relate to your personal wealth. And uh, today, the topic, I've been thinking about all these documents hanging out underneath my bed yeah. with uh, a little bit of this <laughs> and a little bit of that. It uh, It's outgrown the shoe box, and it's ended up in a uh, small Amazon box with a, <laughs> just a pile of, pile of documents. How do I go through the process of organizing all of this, yeah, Brad? Just, just buy something bigger at Amazon and get a bigger box <laughs> and throw it in. That will be no, no problem for yeah, my family. We're yeah, always ordering yeah. something bigger on Amazon. Yeah. It's not, um, your case is not unusual. There's We see it all the time where people bring in that box and yeah. want us to go through it. Um, it's just really important that you get your head around it. It's one of those things that yeah, it's never going to happen to me and you can just yep. leave that box sit there. But when it comes to the will and healthcare directives and power of attorney and, you know, any special type things that you have, you should make sure that you archive those. If it's in a file somewhere, it's fine. Then the kids can find it. But in our office, a lot of times what we'll do is electronically We'll make sure that we get a get a copy of that. And then we can put that in our client site as well. It's called the Vault, where they can have an electronic version of those documents. And it's a it's a value add that that we provide. But I think it's just really important, especially with that second generation, that they've got the ability to get at that if mom and dad want them to, right, at, at those documents. So you said something that I don't know exactly what it is. Explain to me what a power of attorney is. What yeah. does that what does that do? What's yeah, the purpose so, of that? so everybody needs three things, right? Okay. And I'm not an attorney and I'm not an accountant, but everybody needs three things. Okay. They need to have a will, okay. right? So if, if you're not here to, today, what's going to happen to all your stuff? Sure, right? I get that. Everybody needs to have a healthcare directive. Okay. If you're in a hospital and you're hooked up to machines, what do you want to have happen? But most importantly, who do you appoint to make those decisions? And who helps me figure out the healthcare directive? Did you help me with that or does how does that part of it work? Yeah, so you can get it at your local, you know, clinic or whatever, but typically okay. we send people to their attorney. Okay. So then they'll help them put that together including the will. And then the last thing the attorney will help with is the power of attorney, which you asked about. Okay. Power of attorney is a document that says that if you are incapacitated, you're not dead. Okay. But Carol needs to Carol's transact. My wife. Carol needs yep. your, if she needs to transact or make something in your bank account or whatever in your name, yep. that she has the power to do so. Sure. Because you no longer can act in that capacity. Sure. When you die, power of attorney is gone. Okay. That's done, and now we just now we're on to the will and what's going to happen. So anyway, those three documents we ask every client that we meet with: Is your will done? Is your power of attorney done? Is your healthcare directives done? And if you have a healthcare directive, how old is it? Because those things have changed in Minnesota too. Sure. Um, so we're constantly sending people back to their attorneys. So to how get old? That stuff done. How when you say, like I know that, let's say like my parents have that. I'm, I'm assuming that they do. Mm -hmm. um, if they set it up five years ago, has it changed so much that now they have to go back in and reevaluate even five years later on like a healthcare directive like that? Yeah, I, I think the healthcare directive changed three or four years ago. Okay. Um, so if it's older than five years, I would say, yeah, they, they should probably take a look but at anything it. anything maybe less than right. three or four years old, yeah. we're yeah. still in the, right. the good zone for right. it. Yeah. And we'll have people that'll have a will from 25 years ago. Sure. That's okay. If they go and get it updated, they'll add what's called a codicil. Okay. So they'll just change the will or maybe you need to trust or whatever. So you shouldn't wait 25 years before you go take a look at it, but it's okay to have <laughs> at that an point. Your kids are, are growing up <laughs> yeah, exactly. driving cars. Exactly. But it, you uh, know, things change, right? As you said, kids yeah. get older, whatever. So, um, you just want to make sure that you update those things as you go. And then after they're updated, now you got a document. So half the people I talk to don't even have the document, Matt. I mean, we're just sure. constantly trying to say, you got to get this done. Secondly, after you get that, after you have the documents, then what do you do with them? Do you sure. leave them at the law office or what do you do? And so, you know, with those, with those wills and the healthcare directors and power of attorneys, we like to get copies of those and make it electronic for our clients. Sure. Um, there's an attorney I ran across not too long ago, and he t likes to tell people to keep their healthcare directive in their glove box of their car. Interesting. Because all of a sudden it's going to be two o'clock in the morning and you're going to need that That's document. That's when it happens. It, yeah. You're going to need it and you're going to be like, where is it? Yeah. So I like to keep it electronically. So if I can get to my phone or iPad or, you know, an internet connection anywhere that I can find that document too. Interesting. Yeah. This is a lot for one person to keep track of. 
how in the world are you keeping track of it for all of your clients? I can't do it for myself. How are you doing this for yeah. multiple sets of people? Yeah, it's a really good question. We're really smart, Matt. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm well, kidding, yeah. Um, actually, so we have processes in place um, that we make sure that we dot the I's and cross the T's. So, you know, every time a client comes in, we'll ask them, you know, do you do have, have these this? three things? Right. Did yeah. you have it? And there's more along with it. I mean, I, I believe we get paid for these type of questions. You know, Social Security analysis, long term care, where are you going to sell 40 acres or, yeah. you know, what are you going to do? Healthcare, yeah. you know. So we document that when clients come in, we document it, but we also constantly have that conversation about did you get this changed and sure. keep them accountable to it. But when it comes to those clients, you know, we'll have, um, we'll have it done electronically so that we can get to it. But, yeah. but if they bring those documents in, it's put in their file, it's put in for them. And so that's how we keep track of it. It's, it's one by one, but there's a process involved. It's not sitting in a big box somewhere in a vault. And so. what's interesting is that there's a checklist that has an order and a priority to it. Right. And that's the part where like, at least for me with what I have underneath my bed at this point, there's no checklist. <laughs> there's and there no check. definitely is no priority right. to it. Right. It's oh something else showed up in the mailbox. Ah, right. Goes in the and, Amazon box. And, and you know, on a very serious note, I've been on that side of the table where mom and dad dies or one of the last one dies yeah. and the kids come in with the shoe box and they're like, where is this stuff? And, and I always tell our clients, we get paid to be Snoopy. We want to know those things. We know a lot about them, even their health stuff like a doctor does. But we we get into those documents and make sure that we sure. have that. Because the, I've sat on that, at that shit table with those kids and said, listen, this is what mom and dad told me. And here's where everything is. And you can just see on their face the relief of, oh, my God, thank God they told somebody all this stuff so that they can go after and march after and, and take care it of it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember sitting at the kitchen table one time as a kid and my dad asked my mom, you know, uh, if you were to ever pass away, how would I ever figure this all out? And I remember my mom saying, well, you just have to, uh, get the mail every single day and then you can figure out what's where. <laughs> 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 there seems truth like to that too. it seems like that's kind of a bad approach is basically what you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah, there yeah may be a better way to do it. Yeah. You'd want a little bit more structure, but keep looking at the mail too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, from all of us here at the I will podcast, we'll see you next time for another good topic. All right. Sounds good. <laughs>